We are just over a week away from one of the biggest shopping days of the year, Black Friday. Now the critical holiday shopping season kicking off amid a challenging time for the freight market, with some industry trackers saying that we are in the midst of a freight recession. Demand for freight is often used as an indicator for consumer spending. So what can we expect this holiday season? Let's bring in someone who knows a thing or two about how much consumers are ordering right now. We have Mike Parr. He's the CEO of DHL Express of the Americas. Mike, it's good to see you. So some industry trackers are saying that the freight market is in a recession. What are you seeing on your network demand-wise? Good morning, and thanks for having us again, Shauna. Um, what I would say is, we're, you know, we remain ready for the what ifs, um, and for that I mean, there's still some uncertainty that's out there, uh, but we're well positioned to support the growth opportunities. Uh, as an example, we're starting to see some growth out of China, um, and as a result of that, we've had to put up additional capacity uh, in the market, specifically out of southern China and Hong Kong. And so what does that mean in terms of some of the investments that you're planning to make in that region as even more of that demand comes online? Yeah, we were, I, I got to be honest with you, we were uh, quite surprised at the jump. What uh, what we are seeing is a phenomenon where, and what we heard this from our customers in conversation with them in what we call our peak readiness plan, is they started to do early sales. Um, and they wanted to smooth out the peak season and the lead up and run up into uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So um, as a result of that, again, we had to put up additional capacity, which uh, has been good for us. Mike, what, how do you think the levels of this year in terms of demand, consumer shipments, how that's going to compare to what we've seen over the last two or three years? Yeah, I mean, if you take a look at for us, since February, we've seen growth out of China. It's been about plus 30 percent into the U.S. And what we're forecasting for peak season uh, is 14 percent higher on a peak day of December 11th of somewhere between 16 to 20 percent. And this is specifically uh, into the United States. From a Black Friday perspective, we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 to 10 percent. And then Cyber Monday, which includes the weekend, we would see something in the neighborhood of 18 percent versus last year. So uh, we, there is some, in general, we are seeing the growth. And some of it could be as a result as well as, you know, China, everybody says, well, there's China plus one. And we, we believe in China plus one because we're seeing it. We're seeing it in northern Mexico, as an example, whether you call it omnishoring, nearshoring, friendshoring uh, across the border, and more specifically, northern Mexico, Ciudad Juarez, Guadalajara, Monterrey. We're seeing growth from that perspective, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna supplant uh, the growth that we'll continue to see, not only today, but in the future out of China. And why do you think that is, just in terms of, is it cost, is it flexibility of their networks? I guess, why do you see us still relying heavily on China? Well, I think it's very hard to replace years and years of what they've built up, uh, not only from an employment standpoint, from an overall cost of infrastructure standpoint as well. Um, but again, we are seeing the tendencies of growth outside of it. Um, we talked about Mexico, but we've seen the growth as well uh, out of India, uh, Japan, Hong Kong. Uh, we're seeing growth out of Vietnam as well. So the decoupling is slowly happening, but I don't ever believe that we'll see a replacement for the goods that we are receiving out of Southern China and even out of Hong Kong. You know, Mike, more broadly, as you think about your logistics footprint, I mean, we've had the year of negotiations, especially within transportation, especially within even the entertainment space. And, and it sounds like Starbucks, I don't know what's gonna take place there. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what are you hearing from some of your employees that are, that are boots on the ground, that are making these deliveries, that are showing up rain, snow, sleet, and, and ensuring that the logistical network that DHL has been able to put together continues to run on a day in, day out basis? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we've been we've been blessed, I would say, over the last six years. If you take a look at there's a company called Great Place to Work um, based out of San Francisco, um, and we have been Great Place to Work ranked number one globally. Uh, so we have focused quite heavily on making sure that our employees uh, feel safe when they come to work. Uh, that they feel heard and seen included from that perspective. And then overall, uh, our our remuneration packages for them have been consistently above uh, market standards. So 
Our employees in general are quite happy. We continue to make appropriate investment in facilities. An example is the Atlanta hub that we built this year and inaugurated uh, an $85 million investment in time for peak season. And we knew about the importance of leveraging a key location and a key airport like Atlanta, Hartsville, Jackson. So the employees are seeing the investments that we're making. We're still making capital expenditure investments. Uh, in the well-being of our facilities and their safety, uh, and at the same time introducing automation uh, into the process as well. Thanks so much for joining us. Mike Parra, we know this is a, a busy time for you and the team. All the best to you and hope to check back in on the other side. CEO of DHL Express of the Americas, Mike Parra, appreciate it. Thank you, Brad. Thank you.